welcome to the channel please like and subscribe and then select the notification and notify the next broadcast video well i do apologize um the last video was okay but i do have to give credit to what credit is due for Elon Musk and his company uh, SpaceX. They're successful. Well, what I was just saying is I do apologize. I'd like to congratulate them on their successful, somewhat successful second uh, Starship launch um, test phase. Even though the ship has left off at the launch pad and the launch pad is still in, in somewhat in one piece. And it was able to get it to the proper stage for the for the hot um, for the hot stage firing for the uh, starship, and pretty much uh, everything didn't go as planned where they were, but they did got valuable data when they recorded. But everybody is like so happy that they did something. I mean, I know I do understand there was a lot of pressure with the FAA and in fish and wildlife because when congress get involved and they got artemis is coming around the corner and they on artemis that means time is money now i mean that really really is time is money and, and when congress start asking government officials or government personnel they say hey what's going on with this why it's taking so long what's the process things start getting in motion because people start asking when they start asking questions there's a lot of stress with the agency because they try to get everything streamlined, which I do understand that a lot of everything is just not really streamlined. It's a, it's a growing process. It's a learning curve that when, um, when, and believe it or not, this is just the beginning, but I like to play this video, show them how much I really appreciate it. I was jumping for joy for this. I was happy that this uh, super rocket, the the most powerful rocket to to the world to this world to this date, able to lift lift off, but not successfully. Uh, you know, complete is made is important task of, you know, the booster coming back down, splash down to the Gulf of Mexico, and the Starship vessel to splash down in Hawaii, but at least they got data on it because. This vehicle got covered with so many sensors, so many information was, um, you know, was recorded. But I'm going to play the clip and everybody goes, you know, play the clip. And they, yes, this is overkill. It's, yes, it's, it's pretty much overkill. But, hey, I got to use a tablet, but why not? Never get old for this. I mean, it's it's never get old. I mean, this will never get old. I mean, two historical launch on an attempt of a super rocket. Never since the Saturn V. Well, the only rocket that actually actually completed its uh, launch on its first try was SLS, and that takes years. I mean, look at this rocket that's just firing away. Unbelievable the amount of power able to launch all 33. For 32 He's Raptor engines, it's a lot of power. Space. Now the next major event is hot staging in just over 90 seconds from now. And to get ready, the booster will shut down all but This will make, you know, a lot of uh, SpaceX investors, you know, we'll for Tesla, SpaceX, and other companies in Starlink. I mean, e Elon Musk investors are going to be pretty happy because at least they got the something. At least they did the something. I mean, at least they doing something. You know, they're showing. They say, hey, we're doing something. And there's no, not, no, uh, no fluff, no anything. They're really doing something.
engine power continues to look nominal on 33 Raptor engines. We're about to shut down the first stage and perform staging. Let's watch and listen. And our position of Houston, Signal, Houston, and New Orleans. And one thing about it, this thing was never air on YouTube. It was air on X, the formerly known as Twitter. Now we saw the hostage. That was pretty impressive. And now you can see, you know, I thought, I thought, okay, the, you know, it's going to do the recovery, but then next thing you know, it was tumbling. You see some of the engine was not firing correctly. Something was going on and the system was unable to recover. And soon later, unfortunately, the ship is, the, the booster is gone. As you can see, the yeah. super heavy booster has just experienced a Play the video. Unscheduled, unscheduled disassembly. However, Sorry. our ship is still underway with ship all six. Powering telemetry nominal. And we just heard there, Ship Avionics powered telemetry nominal. All six engines are lit, as you can see from the GUI there at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Now, we did know that... We've probably that pictures of debris probably sparking in and out. That could be from the debris from the booster. Dynamic. We knew that there was a chance that the booster would not survive, but we're going to take that data and figure out how we can make the booster better for the next hot stage. To APC, the yeah, that hot flying. staging That's put a lot of load change. on the top of the and booster. Also, you notice that the, um, the fuel gauge on Starship, I kind of noticed that. It is, you know, doing steadily until... It was doing pretty well until um, during the flight you, you would see something, and then you see the fuel just plummeted. Because right now the fuel usage is pretty steady. Because surprisingly, that's full fuel that, believe it or not, I mean, is going towards. It's not going to orbit. It's going to a very low level of orbit of LEO. That which is, it, I know it needs to retain some amount of power, you know, being deployed to the um, engines for both um, surface level and vacuum engines. That's incredible. And I mean, they, they're just pushing the limit of these engines can do. I mean, it's a test. I mean, they're testing everything on this vehicle. The first time using the uh, vacuum engine, this is the first time ever to be using the vacuum engine in a test, in a test environment, a live test environment, which I believe is, is pretty good. Because like, uh, you will learn a lot from that, you know, so like see what the next time they will do. Do they need all six engine or do you just need the, um, the, uh, surface engine or did just need the vacuum engine on it because um those i mean this is kind of combination is very useful because now if we get that far uh, i'm surprised they work in different power levels they're working the same power level that's fine they're working different power levels that could be um something you know spacex could learn from because i'm looking at all this it's just totally incredible how powerful um, SpaceX pushing the envelope on their spaceship rockets. Or you could call it Starship. Sorry, SpaceX or Starship. Yeah, I should say Starship. My apologies. But during the flight, you probably will see... Because um, I'm waiting for it to... I mean, in this few minutes, you're going to see the... Because um, in space, it should be no... Plume. But if you see a plume, that's, that's what the problem is. Because no one didn't pay attention to it until right now. At seven minutes and nine seconds, seven minutes and eight seconds, a plume popped out. And then from that, you would see the fuel start to plummet it. I mean, it, it just, when I look at this video again, it, the fuel was just totally plummeted. It, you see a rapid depletion of fuel, and I'm like, whoa! 
because when you see a plume, the, um, all that um, plume in space, that's not good. That's the first explosion. Yeah, so so it exploded, and then the second one come after it because the fuel is, is depleted so fast. And then suddenly the spaceship is gone because all the fuel has been depleted, exhausted. And then there it goes, exploded. Because that plume just came out at at seven, um, seven, seven minutes and eight seconds, that's when the fuel started to deplete r rapidly. So it was losing fuel, something burst, something gave out. Um, I don't know what it is, some vial or something that probably wasn't exceeding the pressure of the the way the pumps is pumping to the to the fuel to the I mean actually I'm um, just gonna stop this what I'm saying is um at that time when you saw that plume the fuel level of the oxidizers and the methylox plummeted I mean it, it was leaking or something it was just draining so fast and the vehicle was just running out of fuel, so it could be something that it could have rupture, something could happen to it. But I mean, everything would seem normal when I saw that plume. Everything just dropped. I mean, absolutely just dropped so fast, and then the vehicle could not. Um, I mean, the um, the rocket engine cannot receive no more fuel, so there was engine starved. There was fuel starving. So pretty much, you know, the ship is probably losing altitude, losing control. And they pretty much the self destruct self destruction mechanism may, may have engaged. Something must have happened to it and then it exploded during the in the uh Gulf of Mexico and the debris probably fall into the Atlantic Ocean. Away from the Barbados Islands. Yeah. Maybe some people probably saw in Puerto Rico, you know, see some debris, everything, you know, flying down. But it's pretty much is what it is. I mean, it's all successful, but it was the first time they used the actual vacuum engines with the surface engines. So SpaceX may, <clears throat> I said, SpaceX may learn from this. See, if there was a, a combination that something must have failed. Because this was the first time they're using the vacuum engine instead of the um, the surface engines of Raptors. So that's what I'm thinking may have happened. For the duration, everything, because even though they did static fires on these engines, but the duration of it, that's where the key was. Because um, they never test the duration of these two engines working together. And this was the first time that this, en that's this engine working together. And they gonna, they may have found something was wrong with it during that time, and that's how that the second um Starship Twenty Five was lost. So something must have happened during the engine um function during the production, how the engine was running, how the fuel was pushing into the um, turbo pumps, pumps into to the rocket, because something must have give, something must have give, because that plume, that um that plume was the first sign because no one didn't pay attention to it until you look at the second video and you saw the fuel just drop right there and it's all over the internet and people want to say something but you look at the details of it the fuel just dropped like a rock that mean it was just pumping fuel out either pumping or leaking so something leaked something gave out and it's pretty much the rocket was lost actually starship was lost starship 25 was lost have they gonna learn from this? Yes. Have they gonna um, might have to change some settings or change some s configuration how the system was pumping? Probably so. But anyway, this was a good video, and I will see you next time.